Hi book lovers! Welcome back to my channel. I am doing my April book haul. This one is gonna be quite the big haul, probably my biggest haul yet. I legit went on a used book buying spree because what else am I supposed to do during quarantine? 80% of this haul is just gonna be historical romances that I bought from eBay and the last time I counted it was about 50 books. It's probably more than that plus I bought a whole bunch in May as well. I just had no impulse control. I was like buying everything that I saw, all the Joanna Lindsay's, all the Lisa Kleypas, and whatever random things that I just wanted to have. And most of them I never read. I still haven't read. But honestly I'm not really all that mad that I bought all these books because seeing them <laughs> makes me so happy. All the gorgeous old school covers, all the step backs. I also got this pretty tank from Hello Lovely. Very, very fitting. Um, I have a code if you want a discount. It's Lacey15. But let's just get started on this big ass book haul. So the first book that I want to show you guys uh, is actually one that I was so excited to get. It was a giveaway win on Instagram and that is Where the Lost Wander by Amy Harmon. This is her latest historical, historical fiction, which is set in the West during the mid 1800s and is basically the Oregon Trail. I used to play that game in elementary school and I'm not gonna lie, I really want to read this book partly because of that game because otherwise I generally just don't have any interest in the Oregon Trail or Western romances unless Beverly Jenkins writes it. This one is out already. I just downloaded the audiobook because it's on KU. I only very recently listened to her other historical fiction novels and love them so very excited to read this one and have this. I actually won a couple more books. Um, this one is Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. This one actually sounds perfect for me. I wanted to read it as soon as I heard about it. It's a standalone mafia romance. This one actually sounds perfect for me. I've been wanting to read it ever since I heard about it. It's got um, an age gap, a single father hero, a marriage of convenience, and of course the mafia. I've never read her. I know a lot of people love her other mafia series, which I do plan on reading someday. And my last giveaway win is The Punk and the Plaything by B.B. Reed. This one actually came with this cute little mug that says Queen B, but I have honestly been wanting to get myself the paperback ever since the cover was revealed because it's gorgeous. It was on my wish list for forever. Now I can take it off. It is the third book, I think, in the When Rivals Play series, but people have told me that probably should read the books in order. And the inside design is so pretty. And then I got an amazing package from the Dangerous Woman book club box. Um, this is a box created by Sky Warren and it came with this amazing tote bag that actually zips. Um, I love tote bags that have zippers. And it also came with these two books, the Australia Anthology, which um, a lot of authors contributed to and donated all the proceeds to the Australian firefighters and wildlife. I read a couple of the short stories after getting this one, especially the Pam Godwin one because it was like a prequel to a book that I read and loved. They're all short stories. Most of them connect to the authors like other books series. And then this paperback of of Half Truths. I actually own the hardcover. It is a new adult romantic suspense set in college and all about these secret societies and I actually really liked it. I also got a bunch of books from Forever Romance, the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. This one was the one that had this weird cut at the end of the book in the acknowledgments. I actually let my cousin borrow it um, so I don't have that one but they were super nice to send me this copy, another copy that is not messed up. I love this one. It's super lighthearted, um, adorable contemporary romance with a dog. The main characters first fall in love while they text each other and then they have to deal with the hero's rising um, stardom in the music industry. I also got from Forever the Royal We by Heather Cox and Jessica Morgan. It is a rural romance. We've got our American heroine who lives next door to the future prince of Great Britain while they're at Oxford and she is in no way prepared to deal with what happens when you marry into royalty. There's actually also going to be a sequel featuring the same um, couple 
coming out in a couple months, I think. I got the Book of Second Chances by Katherine Slee. This one sounds really good. We have a heroine who is trying to find the last unpublished manuscript written by her grandmother, her late grandmother. So she travels all around Europe to three countries to find that manuscript. I also got The Trouble with Hating You by Sajni Patel. This one is this author's debut book. I'm loving seeing all these debuts this year, especially the own voices ones. This one is a South Asian romance. We've got a STEM heroine who is a biochemical engineer. The hero is the new lawyer hired to help fix up her company. So it's a bit of an office romance and it sounds so good. I've been hearing some great things for it and I really need to read it soon. And the last book that I got from Forever is 44 Chapters for Men by B.B. Easton. This one is the like republished edition uh, because she originally published it as an indie author. I've never read it. It is turning into a Netflix movie. I actually was in an elevator with this author and her husband one time at a polycon. I think it was last year but I never read her books and I was a dork so I didn't even say anything. I also got some books from Nana Malone. Um, this one is Big Ben which is a romantic suspense. The first book in the heiress duet protecting the heiress. This one is a bodyguard romance and the bodyguard is actually going undercover as a manny, a male nanny, to help um, take care of the heiress and her kid. And I got the first book in the Playboy Prince series, Royal Playboy. Um, no bodyguards this time, just a royal romance. I got a couple things from Random House. This one is Anne Perry's One Fatal Flaw, which is like a historical mystery, I think. Unclaimed by Glennon Doyle, which honestly I got because the cover is so pretty. And this cute little tarot card deck um, inspired by Jane Austen. Like, look how pretty these things are. I don't really do anything with tarot cards um, and these cards are a little bit bigger than normal deck cards, but I got it because it's Jane Austen. I also got these two copies from Catherine Cowles. It also came with this super cute book sleeve. I will love anything if you put my name on it, but I do have these two copies because I'm giving one away. Um, my giveaway is up on my Instagram if you want to go enter. This one is another small town romance, um, a start to a new series. It, it kind of sounded like a second chance romance when I read the blurb, but I did read it. I did enjoy it. But the main characters are actually childhood best friends nothing romantic ever happened when they were kids um, but something tragic happens to tear them apart and now they have reunited. I got this cute book from Jillian Dodd, Kitty Valentine Dates a Billionaire. The heroine is a romance author and now she needs to write smuttier books so she enlists the help of a very gorgeous guy. I got this one from Nikki Sloan, The Redemption, which is book four in the Filthy Rich American series. Becca from Hello Lovely told me that I need to read the series in order, um, especially since this hero is kind of an anti-hero throughout the series or a, like a legit a villain. I've heard the series is hot. This author usually writes hot books. There's an age gap. Um, there's a guy in a suit. I think there's some partnership. Not sure if it's a marriage of convenience but some sort of partnership and I am very excited. The last book before I dive into all of my historical romances is The Ingredients of You and Me by Nina Bocci. This one is a standalone but it is book three in the small town series. Um, this one's the only book that I have read. It was cute, very much woman's fiction and not like actual romance. It's got a baker heroine, a second chance romance with a hero who is now taken, and lots and lots of sweets. Okay, I forgot. I actually have two historical romances that I did not buy but I got from publishers. This one is First Come Scandal by Julia Quinn, her newest historical romance in the Rokesby series, which is her Bridgerton's prequel series. I haven't read this one yet. It is very high up on my TBR but it is a romance between former childhood friends and neighbors. And then I also got from Forever A Duke by Any Other Name by Grace Burroughs. This one has a secluded hero who lives by himself um, but it is not like Beauty and the Beast vibes because the guy is actually a nice guy apparently and that honestly has me very very intrigued. And now on to my 50 well probably 50 plus historical romances. I bought all of these off of eBay. Um, I've bought a lot from different online retailers, online like used bookstores like Book Outlet, Thrift Books, Better World Books, A Books, A Libris, but eBay is one of my favorites. I like it more for historical romances, for like 
things that are out of print that you can't really find. First, because there is a really good selection. A lot of people want to get rid of their historical romance mass market paperbacks. Second, they are super cheap. Um, sometimes you can find deals where the books are like a dollar each, including shipping. And third, I like when the seller posts photos of the actual book so you know exactly which like cover that you're getting, which edition, um, how the condition of the book is, whether the spine is cracked or slanted or not. Um, so yeah, eBay is a great place to buy used books if you want to look for them. I actually just bought earlier today um, a first edition of Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. I've been looking for that one for a little bit and I'm so glad that I finally found it. So let's start with my biggest stack of books which is all the used books by Joanna Lindsay. I just did a count and I have 28 of them. One of her series that I was most excited to get was the series which had Hearts of Flame which I read like the other month for Historical Romance Readathon and I loved it. So I finally have the whole trilogy and also the alternate cover of Hearts of Flame, the prettier one. Book one is Fires of Winter and then book two, Hearts of Flame, with this gorgeous cover. And the third book is Surrender My Love with this step back. These are Viking romances, Viking captive romances. I have two books in her Mallory Anderson family series, which is like her most popular series, um, books two and three, Tender Rebel and Gentle Rogue. I've been wanting to get this edition of Gentle Rogue. Finally found it after a while looking. This one is the most popular and I think the one that most people love. Um, in this series and from Joanna Lindsay. I have all three books in the Lysander trilogy. Um, this one is her futuristic sci-fi romance series. Book one is Warrior's Woman. Book two is Keeper of the Heart. This one does not have a step back but I eventually got one from my friend Jessica. And then these two copies of Heart of a Warrior. This one does not have a step back. Um, this one does so I will be keeping this copy and giving the other one to my friend Desiree. I have both books in the Southern series which is of course set in the south and also Mexico. Book one is Glorious Angel, book two is Hearts of Thunder. I've got both books in the Shepherd's Night series which is her medieval historical romance series with some knights. Book one is Defy Not the Heart, super pretty, and then book two is Joining with this step back. I've got a bunch of her standalones. This one is Until Forever which is a time travel romance. Professor Heroine time travels back to the Viking era Silver Angel, which is one of her many captive romances. A Gentle Feuding. I love this cover. It's a star-crossed lover romance between two enemy Scottish clans. I have these two editions of When Love Awaits, which is a marriage of convenience, but the heroine is not happy about it. These two copies of Tender is the Storm, which is my absolute favorite cover from Joanna Lindsay. Um, because look at that, the boobs on the crotch. One has a little sticker covering the side butt cheek, one does not. I'm giving this one away in me and Jessica's historical romance giveaway, which is ending Sunday, so still a little time to enter. A Man to Call My Own, which is one of her more modern western cowboy romances. Prisoner of My Desire, which has a heroine who needs an heir and captures the heroine to get one from him. And my last standalone is Secret Fire, which is another captive romance. This time we have a Russian prince hero who whisks the heroine away to Moscow. I didn't even realize I had these two copies of Savage Thunder, but I do. This one is one of her western romances. I have You Belong to Me, which is the sequel to my very first read from Joanna Lindsay, Once a Princess. All I Need is You, which is another western romance. And the last one that I have from Joanna Lindsay is Man of My Dreams, which is a straight up historical romance and it's got this step back. Now onto my beloved Lisa Kleypas books. I got one of her very first books that are no longer in print, Love Come To Me, except this dude's face is ripped off. There's probably some sticker on it that someone tried to remove didn't remove it well. Um, they probably, you know, didn't hate the hero or anything like that, but I did end up getting myself another copy. Um, so this one I'm giving to Jessica. I'm actually still on the lookout for three of her other super old books that were published by Onyx. So if anyone knows where I can get them, where they don't cost like 50 to $200, 
let me know. I got this gorgeous edition of Because You're Mine, which is one of three editions that I currently have. This one is part of our Capital Theater series with actor, actress, main characters. I got one of my favorites, the first Lisa Kleypas book that I ever read. Um, this edition with the step back where the dude is wearing a cape. My second copy of Suddenly You, one of my favorites of our standalones, which has the full two page step back. Where Dreams Begin, which I finally got myself a copy with this gorgeous step back. I only had it in audio, so yay. And then these three copies of Then Came You, which is the first book in the Gambler of Craven series. I've been on the lookout for this gorgeous gorgeous cover since I first saw it on Instagram and I end up finding two of them. I got this one first but I didn't really like the condition of it. I'm actually giving this one to Jessica. And then I found this much cleaner copy. And then this pink copy that is part of our historical romance giveaway. I actually own this copy already, except the font is pink and not blue. Not exactly sure why they decided to change the font color, but it's still nice. And then these two Travis's hardcovers, except I'm only keeping Blue Eyed Devil because do you see the size difference? I don't know why this one is smaller. All of my other ones are the same size as Blue Eyed Devil, so I'm probably gonna give or donate this one away and I'll have to find another copy. And then some random books that come with the lots that I buy. Um, a lot of these I've never heard of or authors I've never heard of. Nicoa's Woman by Gail Rogers, some Native American romance. Tiger's Eye by Karen Roberts, never heard of her. Another book by the same author, Seafire, a love swept book from Sandra Brown, who I have heard of, um, called Adam's Fall. Passion's Promise by Daniel Steele, who I've never read, even though she is so so, so popular. The Air by Katherine Coulter and Rebel Heart by Lauren Wilde who I also have never heard of but the artwork is gorgeous. I got this Amanda Quick book called Ravish um, because I know a friend on Instagram loves this book so much. I only I've never read Amanda Quick. I own another one of her historical romances but still haven't read it. A couple of Judith McNaught books who I am determined to finally read. I know Jessica read one recently and loved it. A Kingdom of Dreams which is like her most popular one, I think, or one of the most popular ones. And it's also the first book in her Westmoreland series. I already own book two, which is Whitney My Love, but I also got book three, which is Until You. And then I also got books two and three of her sequel series, Something Wonderful and Almost Heaven. Finally, onto my last few historical romances. To Sir Philip with Love, part of her Bridgerton series. This one I'm giving away because I already own the edition with the step back. I got the first and last books in Eloisa James's fairy tale um, historical romance series. These are all fairy tale retellings. So the first book, A Kiss at Midnight, is a Cinderella retelling, and the fifth book, Once Upon a Tower, is a Rapunzel retelling. I finally got myself a Beverly Jenkins paperback through the storm. This is one of her standalones, though it does eventually connect with her Old West series because this heroine is like a long lost sibling of the hero from the first Old West book. I got Got the second book in Tessa Dara's first ever published series. I think it's her first published series, Surrender of a Siren, book two in the Wanton Dairy Maid trilogy, which is quite the series title name. I got a non-library copy of The Duke by Kerrigan Byrne. I got a freaking library edition um, the other month because I didn't check the details so double check this one and this one is very very nice. I love this one. I think it's book four in the Victorian Rebel series and it was the last one um, before I stopped uh, but I do need to continue on with the series. And the very last book for this book haul is Notorious Pleasures by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is the second Maiden Lane series which I am not at all caught up with so I haven't read this one but I do love this step back. This one we have a heroine who falls for her fiance's brother. And that is my wrap up for April. Lots of new historical romances. I actually moved my shelves a little bit, rearranged some stuff to make room for all of the new historical romances that I got. If you've read any of these books, let me know. Um, as always, links are in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Bye!